In previous modules of this book, you've learned how to do fMRI analysis, detecting where there are significant differences in the bold signal. But what if we wanted to use all of the information in this image, both the positive and the negative signal? In other words, what can we learn from the pattern of activity? This is the question behind machine learning. We use data to train a classifier, which is called training data. The classifier is then provided with new data, also known as testing data, and it judges which category the testing data belongs to. To give an example you may have heard of recently, doctors are starting to use computers to identify melanomas, a type of skin cancer. The main symptoms are A, B, C, D, asymmetry, border, color, and diameter. For dermatologists, these are features that they are trained to identify as either cancerous or not, having seen hundreds or thousands of examples. Some moles are obviously benign, while others are clearly cancerous. But there are some cases where moles look similar, but may be incorrectly classified. With computers, the hope is that we can give them several million examples of each category, and then have them correctly classify a new picture of a mole as either cancerous or benign. The same logic applies to fMRI data. Back in 2001, James Haxby and colleagues showed several different pictures to their subjects. Faces, houses, chairs, and other categories. The resulting brain map was then correlated with other instances of the same category, or a different category. Even though there was a high degree of overlap of brain activity between the conditions, the correlations were much higher within categories than between categories, suggesting that the patterns can be used to classify stimuli and cognitive conditions. In this module, you will use these brain patterns to train a classifier and then predict whether a new pattern belongs to one category or another, using the original Haxby dataset as a replication study. We will first do this with AFNI's 3D SVM command and then with a software package called the Decoding Toolbox. Along the way, you'll learn about support vectors, cross-validation, and searchlight analyses.